What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? On this episode, uh, we talked to comedian Sammy Obed. Is we, we discussed how immigrants view relationships, if true love is possible, astrology from a really practical perspective, and, and we talk about that in relationships, so on and so forth. Also, if y'all could follow us on the uh, and subscribe to um subscribe to the YouTube and subscribe to the Patreon. It's www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Yeah, it supports us. It helps keep the show going. Plus, we do extra bonus content up there. Like in this show, uh, we continue our conversation with Sammy as we discuss whether there's a God, why people gravitate towards crazy uh, people in relationships, growing up with immigrant parents. And uh, then we get into a weird conversation about authentic food and squatting for some reason uh, with Andre being back. So check it out. Uh, Patreon.com slash Manschool202. It helps us. Uh, it supports us and it keeps the show rolling. So uh, if you love the show, get some bonus content. We answer some listener mail and we do some fun stuff over there at Patreon.com. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited because this is a special show. And I know that I've said that uh, 500 times before, but this time I really mean it. Um, we, uh, Harry, what's going on? You ready to rock and roll? Oh, man, I'm fantastic, Dante. Why, why did you even ask me that? You know I'm doing I apologize. I'm I apologize. Great, God damn it. Real happy because we got Dre in the building. That's we right. haven't had Dre in the building. And what up, baby? What's going Thank on? You ready? ready to rock and roll? Um, the, our guest today, uh, very funny dude, man. I was watching this stuff online. Uh, really, really smart and intelligent and funny stuff. Uh, give it up for Sammy Obey. Um, I think he also did Conan O'Brien and, and some other stuff too. Yes, but I don't know all the credits, but I know I, what I saw was great stuff. Thank you, my man. I appreciate that. Really dope. Really, really dope. And very razor smart. <laughs> razor smart stuff. Um, I, I, one of the things that I, I, I saw you doing, you know, I, I know that you're, uh, you have a degree in math. Right. And it's funny that I used to say that, um, I used to say that misdirection is a, is a, is a, a mathematical pattern. Um, it's uh, two, four, six, thirty-seven. So, exactly. <laughs> so, so, so um, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to to talk to you and stuff, and I, I'm, I'm gonna pick your brain about some stuff, about some relationship stuff. Um, uh, <laughs> that I did not major in, but let's do it. No, but I mean, you know, I always, I, I, I also saw your talk. Uh, I don't know. You did a talk at a, uh, uh, there was a talk that you had online that I saw, and you talked about comedy in terms of mathematics and stuff. And I'm a, right. I'm a really uh, big advocate of this. Something that I always say, which is um, uh, that uh, true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts how they relate to situations that seem irrelevant, but really are not. Mm -hmm. um, when you have, when you understand at the root of how something works, those cosmic and universal laws, you can reapply those, those, those principles over and over again to come up with the same answers, with, to come out with the correct answers over and over and over again. And when I watched the, the talk and, and, and you were talking about mathematics and comedy, I think, I think that relationships um, kind of do the same thing. The social dynamics is the same thing. I, I just think that sometimes we don't have the ability to see what what matches up with match what what matches up with with the mathematical mathematical uh, expression. Right, right. Um, the uh, um, are you I I are you uh, are you in a relationship or no? No, uh, I'm single right now. I'm kind of just you know dating and stuff. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. How's that going? Good. I'm uh, I'm loving it. I, I feel like it took me a while to like know myself, know what I like, know what I want, right? And know what I'm looking for, and and be able to communicate that. So. Now here's a, here's the thing. I know you. I know um your mom is from. I think your mom's from Texas. Yes. Yeah. yeah yep. And your dad's um Palestinian. Yeah, he's Palestinian. Lebanese from Beirut. Okay. So. So this is something that I find is always the truth because I do I do consultations for guys like relationship consultations and stuff. And what I find more so than not is like immigrant parents um, really fuck their kids up. 
<laughs> you know, when it comes to, <laughs> to, to, to because and, and, and rightfully so, it's because they're, they're so <laughs> bent on survival. Like it's almost right. like their mode is survival that there's right. not this, there's never this, this, this fulfillment of, of like life. Fulfillment. Americans are just well, well adjusted, Dante. Yeah. yeah. Americans just walking around. Well adjusted. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Doug, you know, I'm, my family's from Antigua, so I'm all fucking my, my pops. My that's pops only proven the shit you just said. If you're going to use that Antiguan well, shit, yeah, you said true. I but, think so. Americans are just well adjusted, Dante. No, no. That, what I also want to say is that the fact that my father grew up in America in Jim Crow, I'm probably more fucked up than some immigrants as well. Right. So. I think domestic, international parents fuck kids up, but for different reasons, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, there we go. There we go. See, Andre, we don't have to fight about this. <laughs> See, he brought in the math. He's already he's already <laughs> making <laughs> peace in the Middle East. See how you <laughs> brought in the math. But I, 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 I find a lot of times I'll do consultations with 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 um with with immigrants. And there's this this thing about because parents are like survive. They're like, so you got to survive. Fuck what you like. Fuck what you your self-fulfillment. You got to survive. And I think that fuck your happiness and, or joy. Yeah. Harry, look at Harry. Look yeah. at Harry's miserable right now. There we go. <laughs> I'm, Jamaican. I'm happy. I yeah, had you, you've been here. You, you got you got a couple generations. No, I'm me. the first one born here. You're, really? Fuck wrong. Yeah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the first know. and only one born here. I feel like we ad we adopted Jamaicans. No, I feel like we Jamaicans. adopted Jamaicans. Uh, America, we love Dante. You we, don't we don't let's don't make me go down this angry path, bro. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it, cause there ain't enough math in the world to stop me from this shit. <laughs> I don't, no, nigga. No, I know when Jamaicans I ran the streets, got adopted every, by America. Every, listen, every what Amer standard? Every every American dude I knew wanted to be Jamaican. Whoa, oh, like, you adopted our cut? That yeah, don't yeah, yeah. make y'all adopting us. No, we well, set the standard and y'all following is y'all adopting nigga, us. We all wanted Let's to be Jamaican. Black dudes, up. American black dudes wanted to be Jamaican. They of course, because we're awesome. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right, well, that yeah, I guess that's part of it. <laughs> that's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I find that that be the, the case is that the, the level of I was Sammy, that's, I was getting you get it back your to the camera a little bit. Sorry. Uh, Anyway, yeah, um, I didn't mean to interrupt, but there we go. The, 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 that, 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 that idea of um, survival is always a thing. And it, and it kind of this idea of self-fulfillment is something that is kind of a it's kind of an evolution of of I think that's more on finances. Descendants of um, descendants of immigrants kind of have to find that way. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm, you think I'm wrong or right or what? Yeah, I mean, well, personally, I wasn't affected by that as much because so my mom growing up here, so that's already so she was a child of one immigrant and right. one person who'd been here who was the child of immigrants. So she kind of like my mom is like, you know, 2.5 or third generation. You know? Right, right. And then my dad was first generation. So, now, did he have a lot of influence on you on on no or, or was just yeah, kind of he, he did. But like, I, you know, I think my parents went through what you're describing. OK. So, they spared me to a high degree. Okay. So, so, you know, having been through it, you know, they both went to like, um, like my mom went to like a Catholic school where like nuns beat the shit out of her. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Her, you know, her parents had that, like, you know, her dad had that hard immigrant mentality and like yeah. same with my dad, but like, I think they wanted to get away from that. So they tried to raise me and my sister differently. So yeah. Okay. I, Fair I enough. know it through observation. Really. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I mean, think that, that is more based on the people's finances, like economic is what causes a person to be like, I have the free time or the, the money or anything that the means or the option to go on this personal journey to figure out who I am versus a person who broke. And they just like, I got to get the fucking work, bro. I would, like no I matter would, where I'm from. I the gotta, only thing I would disagree with that is I know I have a lot of friends from Indian culture. And uh, even though they have the finances, it's the the path that the parents the want to take them on, like the, the expectation of the parent and kind of the same thing with Asians too, like the expectation of what you're supposed to do as far as career and family and all that 
it's not a path, regardless of money. It seems to me that they they they're well, forced Harry, to go you, that could path. T- you, you don't even have to go that far. You can talk about your own situation, about the kind of the negativity and stuff. Oh, for sure. You, I mean, my, I can my, talk about my own anecdotal situation. Yeah. I'm the first one and I do stand up. They didn't like kick me out the house and change. Tell me, don't come back. And I'm going cool to shame with it. Th- were they cool with it? At first, no? they were just it was yeah. a lot of check ins. It was a whole, for years. Yeah. It was check ins of, yo, you are. Uh, you yeah, I feel you. I feel you on the jokey jokes, but like, you know, you going to get Earth is real. <laughs> then, then they'll pack off for three months and they're like, hey, jokes is nice. But remember, Earth is real. <laughs> like, yeah. Can you survive when we not helping you no more? And then as they saw me make progression and they saw me work because I would have two, three jobs while hustling and they saw the. Maybe they saw the immigrant work ethic was in my DNA. And it was like, all right, yeah. this nigga's going to be fine regardless. Yeah. yeah. And they just they just took the foot off the gas. And Dante, especially once you, a couple of bills got paid from the jokes, they should they let it the fuck go. Dante, yeah, but you, you also helped them. That. You helped your family out a lot. Like you was always yeah. helping them. you was yeah. always like, I mean, they couldn't. Really I think I think you. it's more so that they saw you are moving like a serious person, whether the endeavor is going to be whatever it's going to be. As long as you move in like you're going to make something happen. Well, versus if had, you just have a kid yeah. that's just like eh, not not showing initiative or anything like that, that could worry you because it's like you're not showing no signs of self-reliance or any of the things that are necessary to sustain you on this earth. If nobody is here to help. I agree with that, but I, I would push back on this. I know I know a lot of Indian dudes, even um, what you call it? Um, uh. Who's the who's the comic that always hooks you up when you go out to L.A., uh, Harry? He, he came on the show a bunch Which of times. He plugged oh, you uh, gave you the list. Neil uh, Nanda? Nanda? Neil, yeah, yeah, Neil. Neil, Neil Nanda. Neil. Yeah. Neil Nanda was like, the first thing he was like, yo, my my, my parents was like, what the fuck? Are you, like, what are you doing? Why are you not an engineer? Why are you not a doctor? Like, that right. was, and it didn't matter his success. I even know, really, I won't get into names, but like, prominent comics that are pretty successful where the their parents are still or at least when their parents was alive they were still like mm. yeah but why are you not a doctor was he, you know what i mean like what, they on tv yeah. and they're like why ain't you a doctor that's i mean and then you you could like you know look culture by culture what it is you know but like indian culture i would say like 90 percent of the time you're gonna find that I, I i know maybe one indian comic maybe two who have immigrant parents who who are who are still cool with them doing comedy like supportive supportive yeah. in that way yeah the rest all have that story it's like you yeah know, how much money do I got to make every year you still want me to be a doctor you know right 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 yeah. it's just uh, because that in in Dante, their mind did you did you have the Dan Adute story did, were you the one who told me that story or no about comedian about, Dan Adute what about him? that he uh he was doing a he was bringing his family like he wanted to bring them to a show oh no it was Joey Gay who told the story that he basically uh. He had killed at this uh, the open mic that Joey used to run. Yeah, at the train wreck, the whatever. Yeah, yeah, the, I remember the this train bar wreck. on the Lower East Side. Yeah, and so he killed there. So he decided, all right, I'm gonna bring my family there so that they can see me perform doing or what whatever. I do. Yeah, yeah, doing what I do. And uh, for whatever reason, the show went crazy. Like somebody did some shit, and it was a really rough show that night. Okay. And then he bombed in front of the family, and he went outside, and his mother was just in tears. Really? Because he had decided not to be a doctor. Right. And that this is what the fuck he wanted to do. And the whole family was like, it was just an awful situation (laughs) because he thought he was going to bring his family like, oh, I killed here. I'll do all right. I'll show them that this makes sense. And then he bombed in front of all of them. And literally his mother's in tears that he didn't want to be a doctor. He only made it worse. Yeah, I I mean, I'm third generation. I'm third generation. My pop still. It's just that I I had I had a. I had done so much crazy shit throughout my life that I mean, I was a stripper and I was a pimp and I was all this. Stuff, but my parents, they just kind of gave up. They was like, look, if you, you know, if you stay alive, we're, we're, but also we'll be the other, OK with that. The other thing is, you, and I think we made a similar decision. I know that I, much like you, Dante, I've made a decision that I didn't give a fuck what my parents thought. Yeah. And so whatever they were and they didn't hold anything over me as far as like they weren't wealthy enough to like. They were paying all my bills or anything. I was paying all my bills. Right. right. So I didn't give a shit that they didn't want me doing comedy, that they hated it. 
Yeah. Right. And you're probably the same way because I know you like at one yeah, point, I, like, I don't give a shit what your own. opinion is. Yeah, yeah I, it didn't matter. Because so maybe I was that's also my... the difference, too. I think a big you... part of it is that they don't. Comedy is a thing where you don't know how it works. Yeah. Absolutely. And you don't. They don't. There's no frame of reference. The dad right. is not usually going to know a dude is like, oh, yeah, I've met a success. Right. I know how yeah. this thing. It's a thing that most people do not have any ties to. Don't know how it can work. Don't know the system of it. They just know right. the. Whatever's famous in their time is that though that's all they know. Yeah, can well, you imagine I, like the first lawyer ever? Like, my yes, <laughs> it's a, like what the fuck are you saying? You gonna defend I who? Laws at an open mic days. We work out. <laughs> like, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's um, you know, it, I, I think it's just a like what you're saying is it's kind of like a, you know, just not have any exposure to it. But look, I still don't know how comedy works. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure that shit out. So but what I did mean, Dante, you were tying this into something else, though. Yeah, what I, was, what I was saying was that it, culturally it, it becomes this kind of thing like um, and, and I won't even say this about like African-Americans. I there, there becomes this I've, 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 in the last few weeks because I, I don't know if you know this, um, Sammy, but I do I do consultations. I do one on one on one constant relationship consulting and stuff. And I I I get the culturally is the thing that that really fucks a dude up in relationships and makes him not successful. Um, there's always this cultural thing um, that that comes up in different ways. It affects people in different ways. Like, for instance, I had a guy who his mom had multiple kids by multiple fathers. Um, the fa- His father left. His father left. The rest of them, she kind of discarded and the, his father left. And he looked just like his father. And so she did nothing but berate him. You ain't shit. You ain't never going to be nothing. You ain't worth nothing. Now you got this guy's 28 years old and he's a virgin because he doesn't feel like he has any self-worth, you know? And what's interesting is his mother has an opinion about what a good man is. She's telling him, you're not even a man. You know, when even in her own life, she doesn't even have any examples. She has no examples of what a good man is because she, she all her relationships with shit. You know what I mean? Right. And and then you 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 so now you're stuck trying to tell this guy, listen, you're taking the advice of somebody who doesn't even know who doesn't even know, um, doesn't even know, doesn't even have a, a, they haven't even accessed a good relationship in their own life, much less to give advice with some to, to somebody or something. You know what I mean? Right. And and you're 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 caught trying to, you're, but you have somebody who's always because of their title, they're a, a mother or a father or somebody who's you ain't this and you're not worth this and you don't do this. And if you don't do this and you know, and then, and then how do you present that to a woman when you don't think that you have any worth, you don't have any self-worth in the, in the first place. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, it's weird. It's weird, Andre, because I also don't, I don't know if I don't, I, I guess in a way I didn't think about this when you said, but I don't even think, I don't even see, Jamaicans as not Americans? Do, do you know That's what I mean? I, no, I do not. You don't know what I mean? Not even the slightest, bro. Well, because I think that J- Jamaicans are so part well, of the part of motherfucking Puerto culture, Ricans yeah. don't see themselves as Americans. And you think Jamaicans see themselves as Americans? You no, I didn't me. say I didn't say they don't see us. I'm saying y'all see us see Jamaicans <laughs> as yeah. a part. Well, Americans are smoking dog dick. Y'all are wild. Right, well, it's, Why? It's just, like, just like Americans saw this land as theirs. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, in fact, maybe, no, they, maybe, 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 oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a colonialist. I'm a colonialist. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. I've what contributions have America made to the Jamaican culture that you could find None. any identity in it? They, None. They destroyed Jamaica. I absolutely destroyed. Did. You may have made attempts. Jamaica's still standing in strong in Talawa. They've never been destroyed. Oh, he's he's talking in Patois now. I'm They've never been destroyed, not <laughs> once. It's no, it's there. The economy, the largest I'm cultural the, import. You, America could hardly Andre, fuck with Jamaica's. The what Jamaican are you talking about? economy, America has done. Oh, horrible, you mean you mean regular things. regular imperialism bullshit? The same yes. shit from the Queen's England all the same way to they America's they dirt bag. Same yeah, they, they the do 80s, dirty shit. Season, oh, that's not new news, nigga. But that that's not no. new. Nobody's saying it's news. Nobody. I didn't say I'm it was news. Amer- all right. All right. Any American that think that they have any impact 
No, no, positively. That, that's not what you're saying. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, uh, well, what are you the, saying? So I can what disagree. What I'm saying is that I, can feel I, feel, it I feel an inclusiveness to all brown people. I and agree the, with that. That's a different statement. That's what I'm saying. That's oh, what I'm saying. now we're on page. Yeah. There's an inclusiveness that I feel. All black all is brown. black. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm down with that. If you black from Angola, you my brother, you black from fucking Mississippi. We the same nigga. I, I'm with it. I'm with yeah. all of that. Well, that's what I was saying. But um, no America, America. over. No, nah, fuck that. I don't even know how you would go that with me when you because know you me. said the words no, but wait, America. Wait, but you know, but you know me, Sammy. You know, hold me down. Know. Didn't he say America did the some shit? He did. <laughs> he did. He did. I think yes. Okay. Wanna, uh, I think well, we yes. Clarify. We just want to clarify here. I think you're speaking as a black American. You yes. Feel this mm. Ah, yes. OK, I should have made that clear. My bad. Mm. I should have made it because I. I, I, two, I two were keeping the peace. The uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the 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 inclusiveness of brown people being brown people. That's I'm that's with it. I'm, absolutely. I'm, I feel a brotherhood to all black African descendants, people of the diaspora. Yes, absolutely. Well, I mean, I because I, I would say even with me, the 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 way social uh, social dynamics and relationships happen, and I didn't have my my father didn't teach me nothing. It's not like he said, okay, this is how it works. I was kind of on my own, and my father grew up during my father was born in nineteen twenty, so he grew up in Jim Crow. So, so in a sense of me, even having a even expecting him to have the 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 wherewithal to, to to understand that this stuff was important when he wasn't even drinking from the same water fountains of people. It's I had to come to a, a, a grips of saying this is what the this is what his reality was. And because of his that was his reality, his hmm. need for me to survive was pervasive over anything else. Yeah. But, and his personal need, not just my need to survive, but his personal need to survive. Yeah. Sammy, how did how did your upbringing affect your like dating and relationship history to an extent or how you viewed relationships and sex? Right. Um, well, I would say, you know, I just, I saw a very stable marriage. Um, they still together? Nope. No. Uh, but at the time, at the time. Uh -huh. So so for me, that was like, oh, that, like I had a standard of stability. So I was like, OK, you can have that. That seems nice. Uh, it's possible. It's possible. What you're saying, but, yeah. But but growing like everybody around me was was you know had a different thing going on and and like my parents were also like very like kind of open minded, uh, you know a little hippieish if you will. So it's <laughs> like I was kind of open to all the ideas. Um, and as I grew older, more and more I embraced like because I I, I I think even even people growing up around people who are like fucking around or not like in loyal relationships. We still may like start out with the, believing in this kind of I don't want I don't want to like say it in a bad way, but the fantasy of like finding a true love or something like this. Like we right. like most of us probably do kind of inherently have that in us. Like, oh, I want to find my, my perfect true love, whatever. Right. And as you get older, you realize like that's kind of a, like a thing we construct in our mind. Um, yeah. Or you or you work your butt off to maintain it or yeah, you yeah, totally. it's work. Yes, yes, yes. You or you, you find something really, really great. And you're like, this is the best thing I ever had. This is probably it. It's probably, you know, on, on some level, you always settle because even if you do find the best, like the best person, the bet, you don't know, you don't know they're the best. You can't right, right, right. prove that they're the best because you haven't dated, you know, three billion people. So, right. right. So we, we always have to settle in some way. But anyways, what I'm saying is growing up, you know, I, I think I had enough inspiration around to believe in true love. But as I kind of got older, I'm, I'm kind of seeing it more as a little more fluid than that, if that makes sense. Do you how do you see that fluidity? How do you think that fluidity uh, acts itself out now? I think, well, first of all, I think humans are evolving towards being uh, more adaptive than the, like just a, a simple monogamy. I think monogamy even though in a lot of ways we are built for monogamy, it is convenient. It is nice to love one person and confide in one person. There are also a lot of elements that play against monogamy, right. such as dudes in our sex drive, you know, what right. I mean? and women too. It's not like it's, I think also, I think that's also just like a social thing that some you know dudes have been a little more expressive with theirs to the point where we might have more eyes out there, but you know, maybe women just as much. I don't know. But I think that, 
you know, if you look at animals, you look at animals like they 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 got some poly shit going on. They yeah. they don't, you know, they have multiple partners. They do multiple things. But in humanity, it became a stigma at some point because mostly because of religion and social standards and all that. And we are still evolving past that as a species. So who knows? Like hundred years, two hundred years, poly could be like the main, the you know, the main way, or it yeah. could be like fifty percent of people. You know, but still we're in this phase where it's like because like even my parents who like they just got divorced, like they would rather see me in a stable, right? like married relationship, even though theirs didn't work out. But I'm like, right. you, you guys were like you were the gold standard of stand of stable. And right, 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 right. So that's how, how kind of how I'm operating right now. In fact, my parents just like they're getting divorced. They're, they're getting divorced right now. So right. it's like. It's like I, I already before them, I was like, damn, it's like I don't want to be in a, in a marriage because I don't I don't think it's going to work out for me. Right. My parents, it worked for my parents. And then like, oh, no, theirs didn't work out either. So I'm like, right, right, right. The right. theory, theory checks out. But to each their own. To each their own. Well, I, you know, what's interesting is is, is that something that you, you said that I thought was interesting is that the the uh, the evol- you thinking that it's evolving to like this polyamorous thing, which is interesting. So it wasn't really religion that that. Like if you know the like historical human mm-hmm. beings are on this earth for two hundred thousand years, mm-hmm. um, we didn't be paternity didn't become important until paternity didn't become important until we started having possessions. So until mm-hmm. people started to farm right. and they put pegs down and said, "Okay, this is right. my land," right. then and this land is I I farm on this land and there's certain resources right. that I farm on this now paternity becomes important because my resources go to my bloodline. And so right. the the um how should I put it? the immortality immortality is not so much the the you know as people perceive a religious immortality or heaven or something but it's moving your genes to the next generation is the immortality just like with animals but prior to that it didn't paternity didn't matter because when we were hunters and gatherers right people were in these groups that uh you know polygamy i wouldn't say polygamy but i mean just people fucking everybody and kind of sharing everything as community was the way it was it wasn't until it became uh i guess prudent for the, the social constructs that was being created in terms of hunting and gathering resources, paternity totally. that happened much later. Totally. And that's and that's only 10,000 years old that right. as human beings, we've been growing grain and, 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 and stuff. I, I guess, you know, there was probably a number of drivers in it. I mean, the, the, the need for paternity, definitely. But like even at that phase, you probably still had, you know, guys floating around multiple. Oh, families, sure. But they were taking care of their kids. Right. And then eventually in some sense, it kind of becomes more convenient to just do monogamy because like, oh, now I don't have to float from one family to the other. But right. even, and then religion, of course, puts even more pressure on that whole thing. So society, religion, the need for paternity, all these yeah. factors in kind of pushed us. Diseases? In. Diseases. What do you mean? To have for paternity or? No, I'm or, saying like, you know. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Oh, and- freak, freaking, freak, freaking. And it's like my I shit on under- fire. I don't even know if they yeah. understood that uh, until until you start talking about germs and viruses and stuff. And that's that's and then one thing with the whole animal thing is like I animals, some animals, some have polyamorous tendencies. And then we some say, don't. oh, you know, some of you, you take that as see, look, they doing it. But these same motherfuckers will rip their babies smooth heads right the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> they were these the same animals. So it's like I don't understand what you mean. Like it's, it's like we picking, we cherry picking at what part yeah, of the animals' what, what uh, want, behaviors want, that yeah. looks cool yeah. to look favor ours. And it's like the same chimp that's like, yeah, fuck everybody, free love. It's like mm. I will rip my son's head off if he touches my banana, <laughs> and not in no euphemism way. I'm gonna tear his little head off and then throw it. I'll fling shit at you right now. I'll take shit in my hand and beam it at your face. Nobody's using that in the fucking studies to say humans should mimic these no, behaviors. No, but they're also they horny and want to fuck. They're you're trying to mimic the other ones. Be, be, what is it? Bonobo monkeys are supposed to be the closest primates to us. That's no, I ain't no goddamn monkey. I will say, I will say, just quick, quick Google search. Historical documentation of STIs dates back to at least the Ebers Papyrus around fifteen fifty. Wow. 
I don't even know what that word is, but well, I know, I know, that, I know that the, the, yeah, I imagine, I imagine like Egypt, ancient Egypt. Yeah, Egypt. I know what because, I'm well, they were yeah. doing they were doing uh, inoculations and, uh, you know, vaccines back then. They were doing right. that with uh, with, uh, you know, uh, exposing people to certain viruses right. with uh, with thorns and like, you know, weaker viruses so that you build up an immunity. So that's true, too. But um, I, I we I read a book years ago called um, Sex at Dawn with Christopher Ryan. And um, he talked, you know, he he basically said that, you know, that the nature of us is sex drive and the nature doesn't fit in with the, you know, with the and, and I, I, even with my own family is my father was born 1920. He was the youngest of 16. It was kind of you had a bunch of kids because you had to. That's how you had your little tribe and that's how you survived. You know, like all of my my uncles and brothers and they and they took care of their people. You know, it was, there was a whole cultural thing. But I don't I don't know if it was more a um, I, I, I guess we, you could speculate, but I don't know if it was a cultural thing or more of a uh, in terms of the necessity than the necessity of survival. I mean, because I think that right. that moves things quickly. I mean, we can we all say, well, you know, everybody's. Everybody does all animals do all kinds of things, but it, it, it's usually the necessity that drives the behavior more than anything else. You know, um, it's um, I, it's it's interesting when you I was listening to you, you know, talk about comedy and mathematics. And, and <laughs> I, I really thought it was interesting the way, you know, like you get a guy who's into math and the, and the way your mind works differently you know what i mean i mean you just kind of look at things differently in terms of those those relationships um is there any do you ever think about analytical. relationships in 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 that way yeah i mean i i have a lot of like strange ways that i look at relationships i mean it's hard for me i i guess nobody ever asked me this so uh -huh. like, um so first of all and this is something i get you know plenty of pushback on from okay from people but i believe in astrology okay uh, and it's not even because that's very math of you <laughs> that's very math of you because astrology is heavy math shit <laughs> exactly so yeah Andre, you, you get it a lot of people they think the opposite they're like why would you be into astrology i thought you were a math guy i thought you were a logical guy astrology is bullshit like no it's not astrology is number based extrapolation on, it's it's exact it's, it's based on a real science of the stars the alignment everything it's based on the seasons the elements it's based on numerology which is numbers so there are a lot of grounded mathematical truths in astrology, but astrology, you know, just like most religions, got to the hand. Ooh, this should kill a bitch on a first date. Come on, Sammy. <laughs> you hit him with this? <laughs> She'd be like, I am a Libra, nigga. Keep going. <laughs> so I, 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 I need to know the sign up top. I need to know what your birthday is. Oh, shit. And, 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 and I, I give the benefit of the doubt. I know everybody's different. Like you're not, and I'm, I'm collecting new data every day. It's not right. like I can be like, just because your birthday is September 13th, it's not going to work. You right, know? right. I'm open-minded, but um, I know notice so many trends, so many tendencies. I mean, the shit's real. It's like, unless I is, see- Is that because you see, you see patterns as, as the way you, the scope yes. in which you look at things? Yes, yes. I mean, I think that's that's kind of like the mathematician thing, just looking for patterns, looking for connections, you know, so so that's that that's what I do. So that's why astrology for me is is a, a huge tool in dating. And, you know, like like I can tell you, like straight up, like it just, you know, I'll I'll, I'll give it an open mind, but I'll go out with certain signs and I just it won't work. You know, let me ask you some, so, so because this is something I'm not I'm not you know, I, I, I'm a pretty kind of you know, pragmatic dude, but I can't possibly see how the planets can affect the tides, the tides and the weather and it not affect moods. Right. Especially when right. we are we are what, 85 percent water, 90 percent. You know, what I mean, 100%. It doesn't, that doesn't make sense yeah. that that would. I mean, just now to to know if people understand how to interpret those things is is where where the, the 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 rub is for me right right and that's that's the thing there's still so much work to be done that mm -hmm. nobody's actually doing the real work it's more just kind of like this doctrine of like oh you're a libra so you're a little sassy sometimes you know right, it's, right. Like, it's it's stuff like that it, it's not it, that's not the real astrology um, well explain to me what what you mean by the real astrology 
I'm I'm really well, interested. And even I even I don't claim to be an expert. I just know enough, and I also collect my own data. So like I, you know, like anything else, just like I use what I see is true, and I also have my own studies and my own analysis of it. So I'm I'm an Aquarius. I was born in February. Um, I tend to I tend to get along with 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 other signs. They say like you know, there's like air signs, fire signs, water signs. Right. Tend, I tend to, to tend to get along really well with Gemini's and Libras just from like just conversational point of view, good chemistry. It just happens to happen that way. Like here's the thing: if somebody's hot, of course you're gonna have good good chemistry. They're yeah. attracted to a person doesn't they don't have to be of a certain um, of a certain sign. But like you know, I, I've noticed interesting trends. Like for instance, like like you know, of all the people I've hooked up with. <clears throat> Like ten of the one night stands, the one time only, yeah, were Taurus. Like Taurus, what, really? Taurus, yes. Taurus, and them just, bitches is freaks too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, I don't know. I don't People know. People say it's Scorpius. Yeah. It ain't Scorpius. Taurus is nasty bitches. <laughs> Taurus, dude. Taurus. Something about the Taurus. They're 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 willing to do that. I mean, look, like what sign hasn't had a one night stand? But like. Right. There was something there. So if I, if I'm like talking with a Taurus, and I'm like, the chances are we probably might hook up tonight and never talk again. And like, okay. happened. that's happened. And you kind of understand is that is that from you just collecting your own data and kind of knowing that to be my own data. I mean, I could tell you what like astrology says about Taurians. I don't know. I don't necessarily know if it's all good. Well, I'm a true. Taurus. That's why. And I'm well, okay. some of the. I, I had a feeling you were too. I can, I can sometimes. T- I can sometimes. Really? tell. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just saying that. I. I, I had a feeling. No, no. I, I, wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't think you yeah. would. You know. Yeah. I mean. I, I mean. If this is what you say, that this is what you you right. look at. I mean. I would assume right. that. But um, like for instance, uh, Taurus women. In my experience, Taurus women probably some of the meanest women I've ever met in my life. <laughs> like like vindic like like if you cross them, they are mean. They're as- gonna go out and have a one night stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I feel that thanks. <laughs> That's how you get your mean, oh, like shit. really, really loyal friends to their girlfriends, but right. mean as shit. And I've and I've never and I've dated plenty of tourists. I've never had a tourist. So, but I don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I also don't. I'm I'm the kind of guy who will will um if if there's if I can't put my I might make a speculation about something. But if I can't, if there's not proof to say that this is like I'm an atheist. So my thing is not that I'm an atheist, that I can't prove to anybody that there is no God. But I also I, so I would never tell somebody that there is no God. But I would say I would say more like I don't I don't believe there's evidence enough to there's not evidence enough for me to say. I'm going to put my name on that and say there is a God. Do you, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Sure, like sure. The, yeah. that level of pragmatic. So what what in your mind? So as you collect this, because I think this is really interesting, the fact that you are a mathematician, which means you're pragmatic and stuff, but you're, you're looking at this thing that's really what do you think the, the research, what do you think needs to be done to have a better understanding of this in a real way? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think more like scientific like studies. You know, Mm -hmm. where you get a large sample size, larger group of people, like thousands of people, Mm -hmm. and you like look into their actual traits without giving them the bias of knowing what this is about, and then see if we can actually determine control group. Yeah, yeah, some commonalities between the signs, and and know if if this shit is actually real. Um, Because the reason I say like I collect my own data is because like we all have to establish our own truth in this world. Like to right. some degree, the world we live in is just what, what we see and what we believe the world to be. Sure. So, like we create the world around us. So, uh, you know, I, I, I just kind of like observe, I, 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 you know, see the tendencies and, and um, yeah. So I, 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 I do, I do actually do a bit about this on stage where I just say, you, you know, I, I have the crowd give me the Zodiac sign and I say, you name the Zodiac sign and I'll tell you what we know about them sexually. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the bit does well because people always come up with like that shit was so true. Like I'm a right. Leo, you nailed it. I'm a like, and and I'm just literally going off of the data that I collected. Right, just from your own personal experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 like these are also things that astrology does back up as well. Really? You can guess everybody's shit right here. Dante, a uh, uh, a Taurus, right? Where yeah. what the fuck Harry is? 
You're asking or you're guessing? I don't know what you're doing. What do you mean? I'm, I'm asking, asking if he asking. can like assess based on our behavior. And oh, okay. Whatever I'll give him mine. I'm a Scorpio. He, he wanted you not to give it. Oh, oh, all right, but <laughs> uh, we'll said you're a I don't know. Because he guessed that one already. Oh what? <laughs> yeah, he, you know, he gave you know, mine first. It's it's a it's a it's. I'm not good at guessing every sign, but for some reason, I I can usually spot a Taurus. Yeah, mm. it, that that in at uh, that that sign in specific, just because of your experience and men so. and women the same or no? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, y'all all hoes. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's I don't know. I, I, I will I not deny is. or confirm. <laughs> like, if I devoted my whole life to astrology, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm not I'm not quite there yet. I don't know if I want to do that. I you know, yeah. I, I would I would like to do this, you know, but but it's just I I don't claim to, to guess it, be able to guess. All right, it. let's I want to know what are the uh if you, since you know a lot about it. What are the yeah. most uh what are the best ones and what are like like Dante saying the worst he's ever dated was whatever sign I didn't say they were worse. I just well, said they were the meanest the meanest, I, right, who are the meanest? Means. Who it the all meanest? comes down to compatibility so here, here's here's the here's the other I guess ah. here's, a, here's a better theory because you, you, you were asking about mathematics so there's 12 zodiac signs right there's 12 mm. there's also 12 musical notes mm. okay and as we know in music certain note combinations are harmonious mm. Well, no fucking coincidence. I like this already, Sammy. I like yeah. this already. <laughs> the harmonious uh, relationships via the Zodiac's advice tend to be the exact same alignments as musical notes being harmonious. So when I say I get along with other air signs because I'm an Aquarius, that's Libra, Gemini, that would be like a major fourth, right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, major chord, minor chord. How do you how do you how do you dis distinguish that it's a major fourth? So, so, uh, so the musical scale zero through 12, right? Right. So if zero is your root note, then Dang. the fourth note, the number four, if zero okay. is root, then four is your harmonious major, right? Okay. Three is your minor, right? So me fucking a Taurus, that's a minor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not fucking a minor. Not fucking a minor. Me minor fucking note. <laughs> minor note. Yeah, right. yeah, minor note. Gotcha. Um, oh, yeah. that's so, funny. So, so, and then, and then, uh, yeah. And then also, so basically, like you, know, you see your Taurus, right? right? So technically, like basically when it comes to like harmonious alignments, it tends to be like even, even, odd, odd. So for me, like if like, like let, let's say Capricorn's number one, right? right? And Aquarius is number two, just going in the order of the year. Right, right. And then Pisces three, uh, Aries four, and you're five, right? So you right. would tend to be more harmonious with odd signs. So okay. And, 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 and the ones that are four away from you are, tend to be the best, most compatible. So you're you have the best compatibility with uh, Virgos and Capricorns, mm -hmm. but you have harmonious, like more like friendship type relationships with like Pisces, Cancer, um, and Scorpio. See, and then and then there's the one that's like the full on the opposite. So if like the zero to six, like the one that's six away from you, right, is Scorpio. So okay. those tend while those tend not to have the most attractive, like inherent attractive relationships those tend to be the best for stable partnerships right so and friendships so, and friendships uh -huh. yes so biz, it could be business partnership it could be friendship or it could be marriage um there, there there is there is some bit of stability with people who are on the opposite end of the year from you okay um, and this is what astrology says and it also and my my observations concur this so um but yeah so okay so so you as a, you as a taurus um I, I, I'm sorry. Are you in a relationship? Are you married? Are you? Yeah, I'm in a relationship, and I'm married. <laughs> ah, <laughs> All right. There you go. So which what are the which sign is which that? Is... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a Le uh, a Leo. Leo. Okay. Okay. So so I don't and, even know and, her and, birthday. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's because she told me today. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so you if this if this was a you know a musical note, first of all, what's your birthday and what's her birthday? May thirteenth. Your birthday is May thirteenth, and what's hers? Uh, August seventeenth. August seventeenth. Okay. Yeah. So that is that like that. If you put that together, that would look like a minor minor chord, like a minor chord. And there's nothing wrong with a minor chord. Everybody mm -hmm. has their own musical preferences. Right. 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 So. So I, I I don't know how how would you describe your relationship without without like I, <laughs> I mean 
you know, it's dope. Like we're uh, we're well, I also think that. um, So I'm 55 years old. And so there's a there's a um, like if I think about the most relationships where I was like, ah, like crazy, it was usually fire signs. Right. Like Sagittarius, uh, like that. Yeah. But I think also me being older and me not not maybe not looking for the the crazy shit that's the you know that out of control head over heels for sure insanity i i think i look at a more i look at relationships in a much more pragmatic way in terms of what do i really want and is this person the person that i want as opposed to what emotionally uh if that makes sense yeah totally and and i mean you found you a fire sign so you got you got what you wanted you know Right, right. She's a liar. That's right. Leo is a fire sign. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and here and here again, like astrology is so complex. There's like there's moon signs, there's rising signs. Yeah. There's all sorts of ways to be compatible with a person, you know, and that's why you see relationships that, you know, you know, in a sense are not what the Zodiac says you're supposed to be in or whatever. I mean, it's all right. it's all different. Um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm always curious about like how people describe their relationships. And it does that compare to like a musical chord. Now, again, like a minor chord is not a bad chord. Like, mm-hmm. in fact, like minor, like you don't, nobody wants to listen to like a major chord over and over again. It's like boring, like, right, right. you know, so a minor chord is like, it, it's kind of, it's a little edgier, if you would say. So, right, um, right. If, right. If you feel like your relationship. Maybe a little more creative, a little jazz. Yeah. A little, <laughs> a little yeah. improv jazz. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, so. So yeah, I, I basically just I go off my own observations. There's you know there are a bunch of zodiac isms that I I may or may not agree with, but that's one example of how I see the world, mm. uh, you know, relationships mathematically. Wow, that's dope. Do Andre? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a yeah, I guess. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, we ain't gonna hold you to it if you get it yeah, wrong. Man. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I don't know I, shit. I want to give it my best. Um, can I? Can I maybe like ask one, like one question or something? Hell yeah! You can ask as many questions as you want to ask. Okay. Um, do you uh, do you normally run hot or cold? Do you like normally too hot in places? Or you know, I'm usually hot. Okay. Pitta. <laughs> you say pitta? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I'm also really into Ayurveda too. Uh. Um. Okay. Um, okay. So then I'm gonna I'm gonna guess uh, I'm gonna guess that you are probably a fire sign. Are you Sagittarius? I'm close to that. I'm a Scorpio, but Scorpio the twentieth. Okay. Yeah, November twentieth. So Scorpio's an air oh, sign. You're on, you're on the cusp. You're on the yeah. Cusp. I'm on right next door. So I literally I literally guessed the closest possible thing, but still wrong. That's yeah. yeah. Right right uh, next door to that. And Corey's great. what, Dre? Leo, she's Leo. So is they gonna break up? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, actually. So the thing is, if you're on the cusp, you have qualities of both. You have a yeah. kind of a Sagittarian and Scorpio thing, and and that is uh, that's zodiac. Uh, that's zodiac approved. I'm fucking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I. I. It's. It's. Int- well, Harry, you're a Scorpio. What's What's Chris? I have no idea. I don't abide by it. <laughs> You know her birthday. You know what her birthday is. I know is? what her birthday is, but I've What's never bothered birthday? to find. Uh, uh, August thirtieth. Okay, it's a Virgo. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's and that's compatible. That's that's sweet. All right, I'm a winner. All right, you guys fucking nailed it. All right, you guys. I'm the best. <laughs> you are the best, my I friend. I told you. I told you. I fully believe. Fucking in nailed it. <laughs> It's a I mean, it's, listen. It, if you believe in it, I, I'm not judging. But well, I don't. I'm not. I, you know what I'm saying. I also it. feel like it's not a matter of. I, I think if you if you have a like the the way even the way that you're uh you you're looking at it is from a pragmatic and kind of scientific way. Totally. Do you know what I mean? Totally. Totally. Which is sure, yeah. which is why I've said I've said this at least. 20 times on the, on this podcast that I, I don't know how to read it. I don't know what the symbols is, but, but I don't believe that you could have these as variables planets moving at it and it, and it not affect people when it affects the tides and, and the earth. I mean, but you I know, can understand how it affects, argument. 
Yeah, I mean, this is an argument that I'm constantly making to people. Like, people, people, like, because a lot of mathematician scientists will be like, no, th these, these numbers are so insignificant. Like, the amount of gravitation that we get from Jupiter is so insignificant. But it's like, dude, the moon can change our tides. Like, who's to yeah. say there's yeah. not one single cell in your body that is affected by Jupiter's movement? Like, you can't. Right. You can't prove it. You can't right. just speculate that these insignificant numbers. I mean, it's and you can't dismiss it in a way right. that just makes it like, fuck, you, you don't know what you're doing. What is this? Right. What is the logic or whatever? Because I, I understand saying that the the tides can affect everything. Right. But what does that have to do with when you're born? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. I, you know, the thing like, is, there's so many possible theories. I think it's just it's oh. like it's just a combination of so many factors. I mean, first of all, like the, here's the other thing that astrology does not account for. There's conception and there's birth. Right. So you can come out uh, a month earlier or a month later from when you were assigned to be born. Right. right. Um, so, for instance, I was supposed to be born on March 2nd. I came out three weeks early. So I, I was supposed to be a Pisces, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so astrology doesn't account for that, because when you were conceived certainly plays a role. And also like other things, too. Like so, you know, you're you're you were conceived from an egg that your mom had in that one month cycle. Right. She had the egg was. But, but also your mom's born with all the eggs she ever had. So like I was okay. born from an egg that came from 1954, you know? Right. Um, so that's also significant too. Like when that egg was created and then right. it was the egg of the month in, you know, June of 83, right? And then you come from your dad's sperm and your dad's sperm can be up to three months old. So right. it's, so your dad's sperm could have, you know, my dad's sperm could have oh, been boy. from March. It could have been from April. It could have been from, you know, so these all these other factors. And then, the, the what if my dad's egg? sperm was a uh, was a Republican, but my mom's eggs <laughs> were liberal? Dude, that could, that's why, that's could, why you're libertarian, bro. There you go. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I'm I'm taking horse dewormer. That's how it that, it makes sense now. Now exactly. it all adds up. Exactly. Yeah. Do, so. do you think that there's ways of mathematically looking at, at that, looking at that data, and taking into those into consideration those variables that the variables are so wide and the scope of that is so wide that you can't really i mean you know i mean you can look at the patterns i mean, I mean you could right. say right. you know the probability of this is this but right. do you think that there's a way to mathematically find an answer or, or like, you know whatever that answer is the, the best we can do is literally just do samples on thousands and thousands of people i mean and this is how all math and science is created like nothing <laughs> nothing is valid until we prove it and even right. when we prove it there's bias and there's all sorts of things like Look at modern day science, modern day medicine. It's all things based on studies, but like who knows how accurate the studies are. It's like, you know, that, that we, we can do the best we can. Um, and but this is such a complex thing. And there's also so many things that we can't, you know, we can't like pinpoint which sperm it was that made you, you know. What about if your sperm is a Jamaican immigrant? <laughs> <laughs> oh, then it, was, it was adopted by the other American. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good. Fuck off, Dante. <laughs> Nigga done coughed himself blurry. Look at that. Fuck off. <laughs> it's weird because the, under a microscope, a scientist will be like, how does this sperm have four jobs? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Why is he licking shots by the, by the microscope? <laughs> why, is this, why is this sperm holding a red striped beer? <laughs> how did he get that in there? How did he get it in there? <laughs> Why does he have the label facing out too? <laughs> oh my god! Um, Sammy, can you hang out a little bit? We're gonna do something for the Patreon a little bit afterwards, and then okay. and then we're, we're gonna let you go. This is dope, though. Uh, uh, Harry, talk to me. No, Sammy, you give me all your, anything you want to plug to the yeah, audience. Yeah, um, I just I, I just put a special up on YouTube. You can watch it for free on my YouTube channel. Just go to Sammy Obeyed on YouTube, and the special is called Organic. It was uh, something I shot a few years ago, and I just put it up on YouTube for free. Dope, dope, dope. Check that out. What's your social media? Sammy Obeyed at Sammy Obeyed. Spell it. S-A-M-M-Y-O-B-E-I-D. All right. Check that out, y'all. Funny dude, smart dude. I really enjoy his stuff. Um, Dre, talk to me. Yo, just Andre D. Thompson on everything and Stouch Theory. That's all. Harry. Uh, on my social media, at Harry Turjanian. Uh, Google me, bitch. You know what it is. Um... And don't forget the one-on-one -on -one consultations at uh, DanteNimmer.com. Click on consult. You can book some time with me. And don't forget to sign up for the Patreon. We keep doing this because y'all help us. That's um, uh, Patreon.com slash Manschool202. 
Sign up for that. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. Sign up. Help us out. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. We are out. <laughs>